Hi there, it's just Steve with something different today. With summer vacation closing out, I threw the girls in the van and we headed into Los Angeles to visit the Page Museum at the La Brea Tar Pits. This is part of LA's Museum Row, found on the Miracle Mile, where you can find the LACMA, that's the LA County Museum of Art, the Peterson Automotive Museum, and more. The La Brea Tar Pits sound like something you'd find out in the wilderness, so it's a bit of a surprise to discover they're actually not far from the heart of downtown Los Angeles. You might be surprised to find that some of the tar pits are still around and that they are, in fact, simply pits that are full of tar. The tar pits trapped creatures large and small, including mastodons pictured here. I'm not sure whether these creatures died because they got trapped in the gooey tar or because they couldn't escape this formidable wire fence. Tar pits on the grounds range from quite large to very small. As you can see, the fence around the small pit is quite low, so not surprisingly, no mastodons are seen trapped inside it. When you get inside the museum, one of the first things you encounter is this hands-on exhibit that lets you feel just how difficult it is to extricate yourself once caught in the sticky tar. Plus, it's more fun than any of the exercise machines at your local gym. Win-win. Most of what you see at the Page Museum are bones. Bones of all shapes and sizes. I had just been to the dentist in the morning before coming, so ruefully noted that this guy still had his teeth after a few thousand years, and nobody lectured him about flossing. What's up with that? The Page Museum has thousands and thousands of bones, but this is the only one they will let you touch. That's hip. I mean, that's a hip bone. No, really, it's a hip. Yeah, you get it. Yeah. It seems like more than anything else, they've got this huge collection of dire wolf skulls. Their theory is that when other animals got stuck in the tar, packs of wolves would attack only to get trapped themselves. However, they also report finding the remains of thousands of turtles, yet never finding even one single turtle skull. My theory is that four to 10,000 years ago, Turtles look like this. As impressive as that, as that theory is, the museum has some great curators who may know even more than me. You'll note that even my own daughter seems more willing to listen to her than me. I should be quiet here. What would happen if he lost this tooth? He'd go hungry, right? Yeah. What happens when you lose your teeth? You go back in, yeah. But then there's a big hole, right? And you don't, you can't eat right there. Yeah. So this guy, instead of losing his tooth. He, first, he grows his whole brand new tooth, and then he loses his old tooth. Can I show you something? So over here, yeah. right there, good the job! Of the so this guy is losing, he's about to lose his old tooth because his new tooth is growing in. So he'll be able to um, still eat while he loses his tooth. It's pretty cool, huh? All of the bones at the Page Museum generally range from 10,000 to 40,000 years old. And I got the idea that you could really make their day here by continually asking where you could see dinosaur bones. I got this idea because there are signs posted on every bit of available wall space saying that since dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, they were all long gone by the time the tar pits were most active trapping animals. So clearly, they would love to hear more questions about T-Rex and hear about how disappointed you are not to see any pterodactyl skeletons hanging from the ceiling. This is an ancient condor. Still, even without dinosaurs, Walking around these prehistoric remains can prompt a lot of thought and introspection. I thought about how these ancient condors, skeletons, and how they relate to Wendell and Van Drainen book I'm now reading with the girls called Sammy Keys and the Wild Things, which is a great book and a great series that talks about condors and getting out in nature. I thought about discussing evolution and the pace of global change, and how insane I think it is to imagine you could ever come up with a more intelligent design concept than genetic mutation and natural selection. Or I might have talked about private-public partnerships, where government money combines with private donations, academic oversight, and volunteer efforts to produce something so amazing and so beneficial to the public good. But mostly what I thought about was how incredibly lame it is that we ever sit around feeling bored, about how little difference there is in the effort required to sit in front of the television watching reality TV, or reality TV that masquerades as sports, or reality TV that masquerades as news, and the only slightly greater effort it takes to get out and actually do something. And I don't mean to suggest that there's never anything on TV worth watching or that I never watch it. I mean, they're still making Phineas and Ferb, right? But if you ever have a day or even an hour when you feel trapped and frustrated by boredom, it probably means you are not looking around yourself for what's there to discover. You see in some of these clips what the page calls the fishbowl, because like most good museums, the page is more than just a collection of old stuff to look at. It's an ongoing exercise in discovery. In the fishbowl, you can actually see professional and volunteer scientists at work. Note that there are more than 70 individuals regularly involved, ranging in age from 19 to 91. 
You may not live close enough to the page to be involved here, but I'll bet there's a museum close by somewhere that could use your help. Somewhere where you could be learning while helping to make discoveries and teach others yourself. If not a museum, then a library, a theater, a wildlife refuge, garden club, food co-op, dance troupe, orchestra. There are so, so many things out there that can help us grow as individuals and help us strengthen our connections to other people and the world around us. We really never, ever have any excuse to claim we're bored, do we? One final note. I don't view it as ironic speaking about getting out and doing things rather than sitting around watching while on a social network media platform like YouTube. My girls might have been bored and totally turned off by the prospect of visiting the Page Museum. On a day we might have gone to the beach or an amusement park or stayed at home to watch My Little Pony. But thanks to becoming regular viewers of Hank Green's Sci Show on YouTube, and even more, Emily Grassley's The Brain Scoop, a webcast originally coming from the University of Montana and now moving to the Field Museum in Chicago, they came eager and excited to learn. So whether you've got time to get out and do, or just sit up and learn something new today, do that, rather than let your eyes glaze over at the same old, same old. Don't be bored. Don't forget to be awesome.